Hey, what's up, kings and queens? It's Theo. And it's safe. Y'all, man, it's been some drama this week, bruh. Brian McKnight and his sons. Nah, I think it's, I think it's all his kids except for his uh, stepson. Man, they having some drama right now. Mm -hmm. And it all began because Brian McKnight made a post about his stepson. Basically, um, I think he, his stepson um, bought a new car, but actually uh got a job and um helped uh help Brian McKnight um you know with paying for the car or so whatever he so like, he was proud so did they like cuz when my when my dad when when we were supposed to be getting the car um he told me that like, if I got everything situated and I saved up a certain amount of money then he would match it so is that kind of what Brian McKnight did it did where like that he was like, okay, if you save up this amount, then I'll match it, and then we'll buy the car. That's pretty much probably what happened, but I don't even think it was like... I think Brian McKnight then was going to buy the car, and then, but the, um, but the stepson, you know, came up with somebody, you know, to help out, and he was like... <laughs> <laughs> say like, damn, I'll never do that. No. That's a good kid. No, I'm saying that's, like, really good. And yeah. I mean, I did do that, basically. What are you talking about? I'm just saying, baby. But, um... But yeah, that's really. I mean, I can see why Brian McKnight would put up a post about that. Like, not a lot of kids would actually do that. Some people just expect for them their parents to get everything for them. All right, so here's the picture, right? Yeah. All right, and um, his um Instagram post says, "Here's my son Jack with his new challenger. I'm so proud of you, my boy." No one deserves this hit more than you. Sorry, I got cracks all over this phone. I'll say, I can't <laughs> this, help you this, this. This, I got, this is the whole phone. I got cracks all over the whole phone. Okay. So, <laughs> deserve this more than you. No one asked you to, and you got a job at McDonald's to help. Damn. Why you just didn't go to Brian McKnight's Instagram? You know what? That would, that, that would help me a whole lot. Thank you. It's definitely like... Maybe because I don't follow Brian McKnight. Me either, but shit, nigga. Brian and McNeezy. Well, while Theo's looking that up, like, I saw where, I guess, his um his kids had put up a post, which is what, how everybody ended up finding out that there was, like, drama or whatever there is. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so let's okay. try this again. Let's try this again. Okay. Here's my son, Jack, with his new challenger. I'm so proud of you, my boy. No one deserves this more than you. No one asked you to, asked you to, and you got a job at McDonald's to help pay for it, and we didn't even ask you to do that either. Thumbs up. You took your hard-earned money and said, here, I want to help you pay for it. Uh, what is it? BKM? You know, what did BKM stand for? Oh, well, oh, I guess that's, the, uh, that's his mama. BKM, and I cried because... I know that you don't take things for granted. You love and respect me as your father, not just because I'm married to your mother and love, and I love you as my son. Period. Enjoy, but take it easy. Did he it's say a period in it. Yup. Period. Dot dot dot. Enjoy, but take it easy. It's a V8. Hashtag Brian asked. It's a it's a few uh, uh proud dad. I love uh. I love your life. Uh, I love and all, our life. I love our life and all American muscle. Y'all okay. don't believe me. Look at these cracks. If y'all can see. Before y'all be like, that nigga can't read. I can't even get the uh, thing in there. But yeah, it all started from that that damn post. Right. Now, the kids had something to say about that. And I have to go to the day page. Because if not, I'm going to be reading or like a... the shade room. You're smart when you want to be. I'm smart all the fucking time. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> okay, <laughs> while you're looking it up... Do you think that Brian McKnight should have put up a post like that about his stepson? Do you have any issues with it? No, not really. <laughs> yeah, me either. Like, like, I don't see an issue with the fact, like, you know, that he's congratulating his son of getting a job and actually helping him pay for the vehicle and it, instead of expecting, like, a handout. You know, the shade room posts, like, 80 million things and I don't know how many days. And I'm about to scroll, scroll, scroll. Oh. Uh. Yeah, swipe up. Right? Even I think that's just okay. There we go. All right, Brian McKnight Jr. said, "I can't imagine abandoning my children, man. It's hard. It's hard not to imagine the psyche of a man, the psyche of a man who can truly just turn his back on his actual sons, on his actual blood and creations. It, it's yeah. mind boggling. No. You want to read, baby? So, uh, now you got you it. You got it. Thank you." <laughs> It's mind-boggling to me. I don't think there's any situation that merits the way my father has chosen to treat my brothers, my sisters, and his... 
and his grandchildren, one of which being his firstborn, firstborn son, who also bears our name. It's insane to me to have absolutely no empathy for the type of life, but be introduced, the type of life be introduced us to, I guess he meant he introduced us to, only become to resent us for that life catching up with us. It breaks my heart, but not for myself, specifically for my siblings and my children. They don't deserve this at all, not, oh, not one bit. And I'm not letting shit slide, not for one second. I've tried my best to take the high road and be the bigger man and all that positive shit, but there is a much bigger issue here. When it comes to black fathers, especially in entertainment that needs to be addressed, I believe there's a serious discussion that needs to be had. A part of me truly feels like our story is the one to begin the conversation that will lead to healing a lot of young men and um, women, he meant to say women, with abandonment issues, it's time to tell our side of the story. And then uh, Brian McKnight's daughter had also put something up, but they didn't put that in this post too. What? Go ahead. Now, the way he wrote all that, it make you think like Brian McKnight has not never been in his son's life or just turned his back on him. Right, like, for no reason whatsoever. And just went to his mar- his uh, his wife and just and just loved uh, her, his stepson and everything instead of them. And it's, you know, like I was, I was believing it at yeah, first because I, I don't like, know their damn. history. And then Brian McKnight had something to say. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We didn't even get into that. My bad. We got to go to the daughter first. Oh, Jesus. I wish I was a little more prepared. I'm sorry. Well. But but wait, before I, before you say something, I was going to say thank you for reading that because you did so much more, so much better than me. No problem, baby. For real, though. Oh, did you take a screenshot? Yeah, but. Just zoom in. You want me to read it? Daddy's little girl. Is that what the daughter wrote? Yeah, I'm trying to zoom it in good enough. It's okay. There you go. Daddy's little girl is never a real thing for me. Nobody understands what I've been through except for my siblings. Believe it or not, I'm not always the person I seem to be. I'm not always happy and most of the time I'm battling my own demons just like everyone else. I grew up thinking that the things that happened to me and my dad's relationship was my fault. I grew up thinking that he doesn't want to come visit me because he doesn't love me constantly put behind behind other kids that he would call his own while I'm casting the land far far away in the back of his mind it sucks knowing that someone else someone else who's not even blood related to you comes before you in every single way it sucks knowing that my phone calls have to go through a stranger barely stranger I barely know that my text messages are read, read without a response and that my stepmother tells me that they wish the best for me it kills me to know that it's so hard for me and my siblings to get a word in not one word at a very young age i was always second place in my father's heart maybe Mm. even third fourth or fifth depending on the situation my father has a call to wish me a happy birthday in years and yet i sit by the phone every single year hoping that one day his heart will change excuse me i'm so fortunate that i have two brothers who are father figures to me who celebrate me and love me every single day that we make and that we make up the time that we lost the anger and the sadness that i hold in my heart every day over this sick this is sickening it hurts knowing that my brothers went through this at my age and are still going through it and that my little sister is going through this at her age. I don't usually write things like this, but I feel like enough is enough. And like BJ, I want to share my side of the story. I hope that there is someone out there that has gone or is going through the same thing. Some teenage girl who deals with this shit constantly who can relate to me and tell her side of the story and know that she's not alone. Jeez. God, Lee, they wrote some novels. Um. Okay. So, Brian McKnight Jr. and his daughter both wrote those posts and they put it out on social media because they felt as though that was the only way that they could get their father's attention because mm-hmm. they're stating that he doesn't respond to their phone calls, he's abandoned them, he doesn't call them for their birthdays, and so forth and so forth. Um, now, before now hearing both, we're well, reading both of these, and before you even saw Brian McKnight's. Um, response what did you think about the situation I mean when you get in one side of the story and it sounds like this it sounds believable okay so what yeah, did you I, think about I, it I was, I was I thought it was sad I thought like why would this man like turn his back on his uh kids and you know just you know just take care of the uh, stepson yeah. I mean if you have a stepson a stepdaughter or whatever y'all should you should at least treat everybody equal 
that's what I mean. Like yeah. love, I mean love everyone equal, treat everyone equal as if they're they're your own as well. Right. But don't forget about the ones you made. I mean the ones you birthed because you're on to another relationship, mm -hmm. or it's because it was with uh, mothers that it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was thinking. I agree. Um, I say now when I read both of well I didn't read all of the daughters. I read the sons, and you know I felt bad for them. I was like, but something just don't sit right with me because i was like why why would he just like just abandon him just cut them off and this is our first time hearing about it mm -hmm. you know i was like that's really odd and then they kind of was throwing shots at like their stepbrother or whatever and i'm like you know i feel like there gotta be a reason for this like not saying it's a reason for like a father to ab abandon their his kids mm -hmm. but i'm like i don't know this don't sound necessarily right to me um, but I didn't think Brian McKnight was going to even respond for some reason. But then he did. And when he responded, are you going to play anything? Yeah, I, I was going to play it for us okay. to watch unless okay. you want to go into it. No. So we're, we're about to listen to what Brian McKnight had to say. 17 hours. To Guam, I have a concert tonight. And I got off the plane to some of the most heinous, craziness I've ever seen. In my life, that my oldest son Brian would that I'm abandoning my children, and the reason why I suppose is because I have a new family, and I guess this stems from a post that I made the other day about my son Jack, who I'm very proud of. Which isn't to say I'm not and haven't been proud of my other children, but I was proud of this one for the things that he did that day. We'll get back to that in a second. Anyone who knows me knows over the last 20 years. 30 years now, as a matter of fact, that I've been there for my children every step of the way until recently. And let's be clear, my two sons are 30 and 27. Not 12, not 13, but 30 and 27. Now, my daughter, I've been traveling about 17 yeah, hours. Okay. And 27. Now, my daughter's about to turn 18. That's another story I'll get to in a second. Uh, I've never missed a day of child support. I've never done anything adverse to my children whatsoever i've always been there i've always been there with advice whether they took it or not i've always been the sounding board and i've always been the one that tried to to help them achieve whatever dreams they were wanting to reach out for um i guess one of my only faults is that i gave my children everything that i didn't have in the hopes that they would appreciate it because i know how much i would have appreciated it when i was their age um i would tell you as parents out there Entitling your children is probably one of the worst things you can do, and I know I am guilty of that. Um, for whatever reasons, I am guilty of that. Um, tough love is a tough thing as a parent to try to institute to your children because you want to help them as much as you can. And to, to your children because you want to help them as much as you can, and I did as much as I possibly could. When I stopped doing that for them, BJ was 25 and Nico was 22. Mm. And it wasn't like I completely cut them off at that point. That, that happened much later. But I've been there. Uh, when I put them out of my house, I gave them an apartment for two years. I said, guys, this is it. This is the time to grow up. I'm giving you two years. I'm going to pay for everything for two years. But you're going to have to work or do something because at the end of those two years, that's going to be it. It's time to be men here, guys. It's time to grow up. At the end of those two years, they hadn't done any of it due to your children because. Okay. Oh, dang it. Yeah, I think it was it was more because it was like six minutes, but yeah. Okay, so let's break this down. He mm -hmm. said that his son is thirty. One of his sons is thirty, and another one's twenty seven, mm -hmm. and the daughter is about to turn eighteen. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, and then he said that when he cut them off, one was twenty five and one was twenty two. Yep. And he didn't even actually really cut them off. He set them up yeah, in an apartment. apartment, and he paid for their stuff for two years. Okay, so um, in my personal free opinion, housing, <laughs> in my personal opinion, I have no sympathy for them, and I say this because first of all, you're a grown ass man. Mm -hmm. Let's 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 just cut the bullshit. You're a grown ass man. Secondly, like you are legit living in an apartment or wherever your dad sets you up, he probably probably put you in a house or something like that, and you don't have to pay anything. All you have to do is find a job and save money. You don't have to pay anything for two years. And and I don't know whether he put them in separate ones or it was both of them or what. Yeah. But it's like, 
for y'all to make it seem like your dad just cut you off and it was like for no reason blah, blah, blah. and the fact of the matter is he set y'all up like in a place and y'all let the two years pass by probably thinking like oh he he you know he he paid it he's he gonna keep serious. paying it he, you know that's dad he always at like that and he didn't he showed y'all like okay like you know i gotta show y'all tough love because obviously you're not gonna learn because i feel like some people um like they get too comfortable with other people doing stuff for them and then like for example with this his dad decided like that hey i have to show you like i'm not taking care of you you're grown so it's like, I just don't understand. They probably shouldn't even put this post up mm -mm. because it really just made them look bad and look like whiny. Like, yeah. and especially because it shows like, okay, that the stepbrother got a job and helped pay for his vehicle. Yeah. He didn't even At have McDonald's. To. At McDonald's. Yes. And y'all know McDonald's, you don't get paid worth shit because I used to work at McDonald's mm -hmm. before. So it's like, the fact of the matter is like, this is not a good look for y'all. Like y'all just look like... Some whining. Yeah, you look like <laughs> bums. Like, you're 30. One of y'all is 30. Another one is 27. And, like, and then with the daughter. Now, one thing he said that I, I don't know. I really liked that. When he was, he said that about his daughter. He was like, I've never been late on child support. Yeah. Um. Just because you pay child support, that doesn't mean that you're necessarily there for your child. Or that doesn't make you a father. Right. So it's like, okay, you pay child support, but are you calling your daughter and telling her happy birthday? Are you visiting her? Are you checking up on her? Like, now that, I was like, I don't know. Because, like, I don't feel like that should have been his answer when it came to his daughter. Like, I, I've never been late on child support. Now, that concerns me. I said, we're going to get back onto the daughter part. Um, with the uh, two boys, it made me wonder. Like Two men. With the two men. It makes me, like, think, like... Um, they probably was too embarrassed to hopefully, you know, I don't know, but they probably was too embarrassed to uh get like a job at McDonald's or a job at like Best Buy or anything because you know we're Brian McKnight's uh kids. Mm -hmm. They even been seen, they they even sang on stage with his uh with their dad. Mm -hmm. So, like, I wonder if it's like a pride thing or a reason why they couldn't find a job or um, you know, maybe they wanted something higher. Was it that they was uh being lazy was it that they was trying to work on music the whole time and hoping that the music was gonna blow up it made me wonder like what was going on like they could have even tried to you know they could have tried to do something and make a little deal or some shit yeah. and then like at least ask the uh ask brian or whatever like you know hey do you think this is a good idea blah 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 and that'll at least show him that y'all are trying to do something but okay real quick here's my thing though now you said that about the pride now i understand you know, having the name that they have, why they could, like, why their pride couldn't get in, could get in the way. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that's an excuse because it's like, okay, like, your your pride is going to get in the way because you're blocking yourself from doing what you need to do. The, like, if, if they would have got a job, no matter where it was, I really feel like it would have showed to their father like that, they're taking initiative, and he probably would have kept helping them out. But then, if even if they got a job somewhere, it wouldn't even really matter that y'all Brian McKnight's kids. Like, think about it. It doesn't mean that uh, your dad or y'all don't have any money. It means that you're trying to work. Yeah. Like, we clearly we uh, y'all we clearly know that your dad makes more money and has more money than majority of anybody in the U.S. I'm saying, well, not majority, but a, a lot, more than a lot of people has ever seen in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. Like, I just, I just don't want, I just don't know. Um, yeah, the whole thing was childish, you know, just putting that thing up. Um, unless it's like other things, but he debunked that so far. With the daughter thing, um, you haven't seen the video. I've seen the video. Um, a little later on in the video, he said something about, like, he stopped talking to, um, he tried to stop talking to his daughter or something when um, a family member or somebody called and said that she was um, having sex or being molested, you know, by, um, well, she's having sex with one of her older cousins. And that he was trying to call, you know, I think he's trying to call or something like that. And they disconnected him and um, I think they blocked him and he said, well, forget it. But if you really cared about your daughter, yeah. you would you would like call the police. You would you would fly your ass down there where you trying you know and try to you know deal with the situation. Yeah. Like your daughter's below was under eighteen or whatever, 
and she's having sex with y'all say with uh, her older cousin. Mm -hmm. Like if you really did care, you would have showed. You would have took that extra step. I wouldn't have cared about nobody blocking me. Or like if being in the media and shit like that. Exactly. Like I mean, it's in the media now. You talked about it. You know what I mean? Um, that's just a strike. I don't like that. Uh, and I'm okay. Like I feel like sometimes like fathers or dads kind of forget the impact that they really have on their daughter and like how important it is for them to be in like their child's life. Um, cause I feel like, you know, like I, I don't even know why that is, but I feel like a lot of men do that. And at the same time when it comes to their sons, but I feel like, you know, dads and sons are like closer sometimes. So it's like, I don't know. Like, shoot, I see dads and daughters uh closer, but yeah, you're right. You just my dad's son, I don't know. Yeah, I would say I think it just depends. Like, I, I just feel like sometimes shit. men kind of forget that the impact that they can have on like their daughter, and I feel like he's he forgot about that. Yeah, so mm-hmm. oh man, um. All right, I'm okay with him cutting. Like I said, I'm okay. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong with the story I had said about the daughter, and you know, put the information down right. below. But um, I'm okay with what he did with his um sons and stuff. He set them up with an apartment. He paid it for two years. He gave them a deadline. They didn't go through. They mm-hmm. didn't succeed. They grown. <laughs> they grown as men. You gotta learn, cause he he's not gonna be alive forever. He ain't gonna be. Able, but then, I don't know, you know, some people be like, you know, get their money after you. Yeah. Nah, nah, that ain't cool. But <laughs> that ain't cool. But you got to learn how to survive on your own. You got to learn how to um, take care of your future family, take care of your sisters. Take right. Care, you know. And um. Because, well, let me say this real quick. Realistically, like, parents don't have to help us, like, after we turn 18. That's for real. Like, dead ass. Like, you know, like, I'm thankful that my parents still help me um whenever i have to come to them for like whatever's going on mm-hmm. but they don't they're not obligated to help me because i'm an adult now so it's like i feel like his kids forgot that a lot of the people children forget that they just expect their parents to be there to help them when it's like you have to realize that if you're an adult you need to do what the fuck you need to do because your parents they did what they need to do at our age so facts yeah Anything else you want to say, baby? No, I think that's it. I feel like I said a lot. You did, and you read for me. Thank you so much. No problem. Accelerated reader. Really? Hey. Oh, let me do my... Hey, accelerated reader. Look at her. Ooh, she used to get all the balloons and pizza parties and all that different stuff. Yeah, sure did. I, I had a few uh, pizza hut stuff, too. Just a few? Myself. Shut up, say. I ain't not just a few. You said a few. <laughs> Goodness. Like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what y'all thought about this video. Um, we would have had more information in there if I would have been, uh, what's the word? What's the word? What's the prepared. Word? If I would have been prepared, I'm so sorry. I'll do better next time. I promise. Um, that like I'm, I'm saying that to you, I'm saying that to you too because um because I wasn't prepared for the the video you want to do. Mm-hmm. We might have to do that tomorrow. Clearly, because I need to take some therapy. <laughs> So, y'all, we're going to dip out on this note. Um, don't forget to check out our videos that we're going to have up tomorrow and yes. our most recent videos that we've uploaded. Um, we got some good content coming for y'all, so mm-hmm. just stay tuned. Theo, you have anything else you'd like to add? <laughs>